Hey, how's it going, friends? Welcome to VR Revelations. Thank you for tuning in. It's January 19th, the year of our Lord, 2023. So yesterday, uh, Vladimir Putin, the president of Russia, had some words to say as they celebrated uh, one of their victories over the Nazis. And uh, many people, including uh, analysts uh, from both sides, were expecting a major speech where uh, they were rumoring that Vladimir Putin was possibly going to announce this major offensive uh, that's been rumored since last year uh, in December when Ukraine was saying that uh, they had information that Russia was planning another major offensive, possibly aimed at the capital. Also, uh, many were speculating that he uh, was possibly going to declare war officially uh, on Ukraine. And uh, luckily for all of us, for the whole world, uh, he did not. Uh, he sort of uh, talked about the history of this uh, anniversary, this 80th anniversary, I believe, over, uh, over the Russian victory on the Nazis. And uh, he gave some uh, words of encouragement, encouragement uh, concerning everything going on in the battlefield, and he did say that uh, victory was all but inevitable. So the declaration of war was not made, and he did not declare a major offensive. Uh, however, I would say that there is a major offensive going on. We're in the middle of a war, and the Russians continue to push forward. As we saw, they took control of Solidar. Uh, they pretty much almost have control of Bakhmut, and they're about to achieve uh, their objectives in the uh, special military operation. Um, but, you know, rumors continue still that uh, there there might be a, a major push for the capital in order to uh, topple Zelensky. But again, uh, the, the, the things that people were saying uh, he, he was going to announce here uh, did not take place. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a quick uh, look here at a summary uh, by Reuters. So it says, Putin, Russian military industrial might makes victory in Ukraine inevitable. Um, let's go ahead and take a quick look at this short video here. You can see he was uh, laying down some flowers there at some tomb, I'm assuming. Right, there you have it just a quick short video there um, so it says President Vladimir Putin said on Wednesday that Russia's powerful military industrial complex was ramping up production and was one of the main reasons why his country would prevail in Ukraine uh, of course uh, during the Second World War uh, you know one of the major reasons why historians say that uh, the Russians were able to defeat the Nazis was because the Nazis miscalculated on the Rus Russians' ability to produce more tanks and uh, soldiers as well. And so it seems that uh, Putin is very confident that that is going to be one of the reasons why they uh, will prevail here in Ukraine. Uh, but again, there's history to back that up. Uh, speaking to workers at a factory in St. Petersburg that makes air defense that makes air defense systems, Putin said overall military equipment output was rising even as demand for it was growing because of what he calls Russia's special military operation in Ukraine. Uh, quote, in terms of achieving the end result and the victory that is inevitable, there are several things. It is the unity and cohesion of the Russian and, multi and multinational Russian people, the courage and heroism of our fighters, and of course the work of the military industrial complex and factories like yours and people like you, end quote, said Putin. 
Uh, victory is assured. I have no doubt about it, he also said. Uh, Putin said Russian arms companies manufactured about the same number of anti-aircraft missiles as the rest of the world combined. Wow. Those are some bold claims there. Uh, and three times more than the United States. Uh, so you can see uh, Putin here. Um, Russian Pre President Vladimir Putin attends a meeting with local residents, veterans, and representatives of civil society organizations to mark the 80th anniversary of a breakthrough in the siege of Leningrad during World War II at the State Memorial Museum of Defense and Siege of Leningrad in St. Petersburg. Earlier, he had attended an event with veterans to mark the 80th anniversary of the lifting of the World War II siege of his home city, then known as Leningrad, which Nazi German forces had blockaded for nearly 90 days. He told the veterans that Russia was fighting in Ukraine to defend ethnic Russians and Russian speakers, which Moscow says are subject to systematic discrimination in Ukraine. Of course, uh, he's talking about the uh, banning of the Russian language uh, in Ukraine. Now, a lot of Western uh, media sources and journalists or whatnot, and Ukraine itself tries to downplay this, uh, but... Ukraine passed a law where they literally uh, are forcing people in Ukraine to speak the Ukrainian language and to learn it, especially people that work in government. They're forbidden to speak any other language uh, besides uh, Russian, I mean, besides uh, the Ukrainian language. And they say that that's not banning the Russian language, that, you know, people can st still speak uh, Russian in private. Um but can you imagine, like, in the United States, like, all of a sudden the politicians ban, like, every other language or make uh, the English language a requirement to speak in, like, public offices or uh, in business or anything like that? Um, of course, that's going to create some animosity towards every other language. And you can't, you know, you can't uh, forbid people to speak their native language, even if they're in some government building or whatnot. And of course, Russian is, uh, I believe, the second most spoken language in Ukraine. Um, so you can see that they're pretty much discriminating by, uh, you know, passing a law where they require people to, to speak uh, Ukrainian, uh, where they force people to speak Ukrainian. Um, whatever the language is called, I don't know if that's that's what you call the Ukrainian language, Ukrainian, but correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but yeah, that it's definitely uh, an aim at uh, Russia. They pretty much don't want to hear any Russian or anything uh, in that country. And they actually got uh, a lot of backlash when they did that from a lot of Western uh, democracies and whatnot. But again, it's still the law there. And so... Uh, if anybody speaks Russian in one of those buildings or in a government post, then I guess they throw them in jail for speaking Russian or any other language. So you tell me. Uh, Kiev rejects the allegation and says Moscow is using it as a pretext for a naked colonial-style land grab. Again, I don't know what they reject. What they are rejecting? That's uh, an actual law. Uh, they literally passed it. Um, you can go Google it, Wikipedia it, or, or whatnot. Uh, what we're doing today, including with our special operation, is an attempt to stop this war and protect our people who live on these territories, said Putin. These are our historical territories, he said, a reference to the fact that large parts of today's Ukraine were once part of the Russian Empire. Putin was born in Leningrad in 1952 and began his foreign intelligence career in the city with the Soviet KGB. Later on, he held positions in the city administration while his political mentor, Anatoly Subchak, was mayor. So there you go, guys. Um, the main focus here is that he did not declare uh, war on Ukraine, all-out war, and uh, he did not announce a major offensive like most people were expecting him to. Uh, but again, that doesn't mean that there isn't going to be a major offensive. At this point, he could just be trying to hide his plans. Uh, you know, the Russians are known for being very straightforward. 
uh, in their statements or their plans. But at this point, at such a crucial point, uh, you know, they could be keeping uh, their plans hidden. And I do think they will launch a major offensive uh, sometime here in the next couple of weeks. Um, again, uh, we do see here that he made some comments saying that victory was inevitable. And so, uh, yeah, uh, there you have it. He did not make the big announcement, guys, um, but he says that victory is inevitable. So leave me your thoughts and comments down below. Um, I'd like to hear your opinion on what you think is going to take place here. Uh, again, I think that uh, he didn't declare it, but I think that we're going to see it develop on the battlefield. Anyways, the truth is stranger than fiction. Thank you for tuning in, guys. Have a wonderful day, and God bless.